are limited Q2 and H1 FY24 earnings conference call. We have with us today from the management, Mr. B. Thyagarajan, Managing Director, Blue Star Limited, and Mr. Nikhil Soni, Group Chief Financial Officer, Blue Star Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the call, please signal an operator by pressing star, then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. B. Thyagarajan. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure interacting with you today. Um, also, I wish to convey the festival greetings to all of you and your family members. Uh, as you might have seen from the results announced yesterday, uh, it was an excellent quarter for Blue Star and uh, with the revenue from operations growing by around 19% and uh, EBITDA improvement uh, in terms of uh, the margins to 6.5% of the revenue from 5.4% of the revenue and the PBT again has grown uh, significantly uh, to 95.03 crores uh, with the f being 5% of the revenue. Uh, so uh, the the on the uh, on on uh, this particular quarter, today we will deal with several comments and answer your questions uh, on the quarter that ended, as well as the uh, outlook for the forthcoming quarters. As you may be aware, uh, during the quarter we we also had uh, completed the. Uh, QIP issue and uh, we are on a different uh, plane altogether with regard to our balance sheet, uh, our growth strategies and what uh, we would like to deliver in the coming years. Um, before uh, Nikhil uh, interacts, gives you the update on the quarter and we begin to answer the questions. Uh, I would also like to state that the festival season has started off well. Uh, we had uh, impressive sales during Onam and subsequently during the Puja as well. As uh, we are approaching the Diwali season, the demand from uh, the market uh, seemed to be significantly higher than what it was last year. Uh, the order inflow from several segments as far as B2B business are concerned are also healthy and encouraging. We uh, have uh, moved past the uh, issues pertaining to supply chain. Our manufacturing capacity investments are on track. Uh, supply chain uh, disruptions are behind us. And we continue to invest in capability building in terms of people and the processes. Uh, I can I can uh, I, I can share with you that that uh, barring certain unexpected or uh, unintended consequences that may be happening due to global economic issues. We seem to be on a right track to end the financial year again on a high note. Uh, with that, I will hand it over to Mr. Thank you, Mr. Tagarajan. So, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I will provide you an overview of the results of Lista for the quarter ended September 2023. Uh, Q2 FY24 has turned out to be an excellent quarter with demand for room air conditioners bouncing back and B2B business continuing to grow at a healthy pace. Moreover, margins improved across business segments, both owing to the continued thirst on total cost management initiatives and stability in commodity prices and rates. Further, the company witnessed healthy order inflow and consequently ended the quarter on a record carry-forward order book. As you are aware, during the quarter, the company also successfully completed a fundraise of rupees 1,000 crores through our first ever QIP transaction. This has witnessed a strong response from existing and new marquee foreign portfolio investors, sovereign wealth funds, and top domestic institutional investors. 
the financial highlights for the quarter ended September 23 on the consolidated basis are summarized as follows. Revenue from operations for quarter 2 FY24 grew 19.5% to rupees 1890 crores as compared to rupees 1582 crores in Q2 of last year. EBITDA excluding other income for Q2 of FY24 improved to rupees 123 crores which gives an EBITDA margin of 6.5% as compared to rupees 86 crores which is EBITDA margin of 5.4% in Q2 of last year. This improvement was due to scale and higher gross margins. PBT before exceptional items grew 65.2% to rupees 95 crores in the Q2 of this year as compared to rupees 58 crores in the Q2 of last year. So tax expenses for Q2 FY24 was rupees 24 crores as compared to rupees 15 crores in Q2 of last year. Net profit in this quarter grew to rupees 71 crores as compared to rupees 43 crores in Q2 of last year. EPS for so the current quarter stands at 3.65 rupees as compared to rupees 2.21 in the quarter 2 of last year. The carry for order book as of September 30, 23 grew by 44.4% to rupees 6,009 crores as compared to rupees 4,162 crores as of last September. As already reported, the company continues to invest in expanding manufacturing capacity accelerating its R&D investments as well as digitalization investment as a part of its growth plans and profitability improvement. Consequently, the capital employed as on 30th September 23 increased to rupees 2,070 crores as compared to rupees 1,441 crores in the September 30th of last year. The net cash position as on September 30, 2023 was rupees 286 crores as compared to the net borrowing of rupees 393 crores which we had as on last September. Coming to business highlights for the second quarter, the segment one that is electromechanical projects and commercial air conditioning, the segment revenue grew by 12.1 percent to rupees 1077 crores as compared to rupees 961 crores in the quarter two of last year. Segment results were rupees 65 crores that was 6.1 percent of revenue in the Q2 of the current year as compared to rupees 60 crores in at 6.3 percent of revenue in Q2 of last year. Order inflow for the quarter was rupees 1765 crores as compared to rupees 1198 crores in the Q2 of last year. Coming to individual businesses, electromechanical projects business, while the slowdown and delay in order finalization in commercial business buildings sector continued during the quarter, inquiries and order finalization from factories, data center, railway electrification, water NEP, metro railway sectors, and healthcare sectors remain burned. The company continues to be focused on profitable and healthy cash flow projects. Carry for order book for electromechanical project business was at Rs. 4,609 crores as on September 30th, 23 as compared to 3,054 crores as on September 30th of last year. This was a growth of around 51%. Coming to commercial air conditioning systems, the commercial air conditioning business continued to witness traction from industrial, healthcare and retail sectors. Additional demand from tier 3 and 4 cities also continued to increase significantly with major orders from these towns in light commercial segment. We continue to maintain our number one position in ducted air conditioning system as well as crawl chillers and second position in VRS and school chillers. Coming to international business, we have observed growth across all segments with increasing demand for our products in international markets. We witnessed strong demand for our VRS systems with increasing adoption of this technology and rising demand from developers seeking value-oriented brands. The pace of inquiries and order inflows at Qatar started to pick up with a few major orders received during the quarter. We are also in the process of developing advanced products and solutions for North America and Europe. Coming to segment two, that is unitary products, the segment two revenue grew 38% to rupees 729 crores in Q2 FY24 as compared to rupees 529 crores in Q2 of last year. 
segment result grew to rupees 62 crores which is 8.4% of revenue in q2 of the current year as compared to rupees 32 crores at 6.1% of the revenue in q2 of last year this was aided by both scale as well as improved gross margin coming to cooling and purification process business while the second quarter has traditionally not been a strong quarter for room air conditioners this year aided by latent demand arising out of the muted summer the industry estimate is estimated to have grown at 30% and the company registered a growth of 39%. Our market share of H1 is estimated at 13.5%. Coming to commercial refrigeration business, with growing investments in segments such as food retail, horeca, hospitality, dairy, ice cream, processed foods and food delivery, on the back of rising consumer demand, we witnessed volume growth across major product categories such as deep freezers and vesiculars. We also witnessed robust demand for storage water coolers from institutional segments. Additionally, demand from cold store, for cold storage from warehousing, processed foods, pharma and oreca segments remained strong during the quarter. We also launched our new range of deep freezers compliant with the recently launched DE star rating program. We continue to maintain our leadership position in deep freezers, storage water coolers and modular cold rooms. Coming to the third segment, that is professional electronics and industrial systems, the segment revenue was at rupees 84 crores in quarter two of the current year, as compared to rupees 92 crores in quarter two of the last year. Segment result was at rupees 12.2 crores in the current quarter, as compared to 13.8 crores in the last quarter. The steady rise in corporate capex across segments continued to drive overall demand for this segment. The non-destructive testing business continued to witness traction on the back of manufacturing investments. Increasing investment in healthcare by both public and private sectors continued to drive growth for healthcare business. However, a slowdown in data security business partially impacted revenue growth for the quarter. Finally, coming to business outlook, the early indications are that the demand for room air conditioners and commercial refrigeration products during the forthcoming festival season will be good. With a healthy order book and steady inflow of inquiries, B2B businesses are expected to maintain the growth momentum. We remain optimistic about the prospects for the remaining quarters and committed to creating long-term value for our stakeholders. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm done with the opening remarks. I would like to now pass it on to back to the moderator and we'll open the floor for questions. We'll try to answer as many questions as we can and to the extent we are unable to, we'll get back to you while we Open for questions now. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask questions may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking questions. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Lavina Quadros from Jeffries. Please go ahead. Uh, so, hi, congrats on a good set of numbers. I just wanted to understand the thousand crores that you've raised in the QIT. Could you just outline your investment capex plans for the next uh, three to four years? And in which areas would you be spending? If you can give a broad sense as well, that will be great. Thanks. So, Nathan, uh, sorry, Nikhil will be. Uh, so, right now, the, if you see the over next uh, two years, that is at 24 and at 25, we expect uh, the overall manufacturing investments. Uh, to be in the region of around 650 crores in that range in various segments that we are invested in. We are building capacities as you are aware, there is a city phase 2 which is being invested. We are going up from 600,000 to 1.2 million. Uh, we are also investing in sub 300 litre deep freezers and we are also investing in other new products which we are launching. So that's the kind of manufacturing spend which we'll be having. We will be also investing in research and development. That's the first area. And both in terms of uh, building labs as well as in terms of uh, product development, which is going to happen. Uh, besides, there is investments happening on the digitalization front. So that's the another area. Incremental working capital is always going to be there as uh, the scale up is happening and as the volumes go up, that is one area which gets used up. So that's the kind of spend which we will have. This spend will be happening over a period of two years. 
Uh, okay, and just on this sub 300 liter deep freezer market, right? Uh, Daikin is the number one player there. Are you all number two? Just to understand the market share dynamics there a bit better. In the room air conditioner? No, no, in the deep freezers, commercial refrigeration. Uh, yeah, so the uh, first of all, uh, I will also give a ba background behind this. Number one is deep freezer is typically used for any uh, frozen product, but uh, that uh, usage is expanding beyond ice cream. That is the growth driver, uh, kind of like ready to fry stuff, etc., get stored there. Uh, second insight I want to give you is uh, typically the deep freezers there in 400 liter, 500 liter capacity and 300 liter capacity coming into play in the past four or five years, that quantity becoming significant. What is actually happening is now with the expansion of deep freezers into smaller markets, sorry, expansion of ice cream consumption into smaller markets, you do have uh, smaller capacity deep freezers, uh, uh, market size growing like 150 liter, 250 liter, so on and so forth. Uh, the uh, this category uh, will continue to grow at a CAGR in my view of uh, in excess of 20 percent because of this. And uh, also out of that, the lower capacity deep freezer demand significantly growing. Third is, uh, compared with the hard top, uh, glass top, deep freezer consumption beginning to grow in a much faster way. Now, there were deep freezers which were getting imported from China that the tariff barriers as well as non-tariff barriers like the QCO uh, making uh, uh, th that uh, business model unviable for many small manufacturers uh, or the uh, dealers here. So in the process, domestic deep freezer market uh, pro promises uh, good growth potential. We will continue to invest in expanding our manufacturing footprint uh, as far as deep freezer manufacturing is concerned. And practically any type of deep freezer and any capacity we will be in a position to manufacture. Currently, we should be enjoying a market share of close to 28% uh, and uh, we will continue to improve that market share. Thank you, sir. So lastly, just on this China imports, how much approximately of the market was it earlier, China imports? In deep freezer, my guess still last year would have been 50% of the deep freezers consumed in India would have been from China. Many people like like a, even a ice cream chain may end up directly importing. There were many local players who were importing and branding it. Why Blue Star itself imported uh, less than uh, 250 liter capacity from uh, China only, and uh, so that 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 business model is no longer viable. Understood, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ravi Swaminathan from Spark Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, thanks for taking my question and congrats on a good set of numbers. My first question is with respect to the room AC market. Um, uh, you had mentioned that we, we, have, we would have grown at 39% uh, in this quarter. Uh, your sense on what can be the market growth for FI24 for the entire room AC market? and how much more market share potential gain is there for you over the next couple of years in the room AC space? See, since it was, uh, it was a, a last summer season uh, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the growth uh, will be less than what was originally projected. If you recollect, we all felt that the market should grow by at least to 20% and mm -hmm. the blue star should grow by 25%. I would, I had maintained after the summer that still at the end of the year we, we will end up with the market growth. It will not be a deep growth and my estimate is that it should be at least 10% market should grow and we should grow by 15% compared with uh, uh, the market, that, that's the estimate. There is a possibility that it, it can even register 15% growth. It, as you know, the entire thing will depend on 
how the climate conditions are in February and March, it depends on, uh, you know, onset of mm -hmm. summer season, that's what you would Okay. And uh, the non room AC business also, you had talked about the deep freezers. Uh, as an entire seg sub-segment, non room AC business, can it grow at a faster pace than room AC, so it's driven by these deep freezer and other products? or Always it has been growing, but that uh, weightage of that is very small, right? Hmm. So you are you are talking about a yeah, market, uh, a yeah, product category like room air conditioner, which is twenty thousand crores. Okay, hmm. compared with some two thousand five hundred crore deep freezer. So it has been growing much faster than room AC, but it will never be able to catch up with the room AC market size. Hmm. Well, and uh, say in terms of profitability front also, there has been a uh, jump in the gross profits. Uh, that's because of the mix improving or commodity prices going up, operating leverage at the EBITDA level. Your thoughts on that? Multiple things. Number one is uh, scale uh, itself helps. Number two is connected with the uh, cost management program, both in terms of uh, products, uh, product design, product re portfolio realignment, and the third thing is connected with the quarter has uh, lower advertising spends. And you may say that last year also advertising would have been there, but uh, the industry as a whole, if you look at it, advertising spends are coming down. You might have noticed that the category itself. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so these are the reasons. So it is the scale. It is, uh, in our case, uh, product portfolio changes and redesigning and repositioning the products, which improves the gross margin. The third is the operating costs are kept uh, low, uh, specifically even advertising expenses. But I equally again tell you that the consumer finance related costs which is part of the gross margin that has significantly gone up and it will continue to go up for the reason uh, that more than 45% of the sales are happening through consumer finance in case of room air conditioner. Mm -hmm. More, sir. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to participants that you may press star and one to join the question queue. The next question is from the line of Sanjay Satapati from Amberson Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so thanks a lot for the opportunity. Uh, so my question is on the uh, profit margin on your construction side of the business, uh, that is MEP. If you can just tell us, uh, like, um, what are the levers available to uh, you, and what kind of uh, sustainable margin that one can look at in that uh, particular segment, considering that the order growth is so strong. Uh, so first of all, um, the guidance is 6.5 uh, percent we keep saying that do not look at one particular quarter margin for that business for the simple reason it may be a particular project getting executed or a set of projects getting executed in one quarter compared with certain other projects getting closed in different quarters the second thing is that uh, the segment one comprises there is electromechanical projects and within that there are buildings there is infra there is factories there are data center each one of them come with different mar margin profile there is a second segment which is package air conditioning which is vrf and ducted systems there is third associated service business within that now, uh, we do uh, believe that uh, at a steady state, we may be able to deliver 6.5% margin in that. Anything above 6.5% 6 is dependent on a particular quarter and what is happening. It will be a project which is getting closed. It could be uh, the mix of the package, the air conditioning orders which are being executed. 
The good news is that our own manufactured package air conditioning, VRF, we are in a quarter where the commodity prices are stable, exchange rates are stable, and we have carried out our design optimization and other improvements, and the scale itself, this is benefiting. And uh, the service business, as you know, is a steady one, so there is nothing to worry about it. Now, uh, the levers that we have got are, A, stay focused on uh, quality of the or project orders and free cash flows. That is the secret to improving the margin sales. In package air conditioning or VRF, we should continue to invest in R&D and continues to look at design optimization initiatives. And scale itself will help us to improve the margins. So therefore, uh, we, we, our guidance remains 6.5 to 7 percent, and we are uh, we are confident that we will maintain our market leadership. We will continue to grow faster than the market, and we we will uh, keep you updated if there is a huge shift that is going to happen in terms of margin. Uh, I mean upwards. And again, I would like to reiterate, as far as the project business is concerned, that we are not chasing the market share rate. We are chasing uh, profitability. We are chasing cash flows. And uh, we will scale uh, depending on the opportunities that is available, which is today in factories, data center, and infra projects. Understood. Thanks a lot, sir. Uh, will you also be using part of your uh, uh, fundraising, etc., to uh, reduce balance uh, date considerably, or that is not something which we are looking at right now? Uh, yeah. So how it will happen is that uh, definitely on an immediate basis, uh, the money will go to spend for debt repayments. Uh, what it also allows us is that it gives me a capacity to raise going forward when we actually do the spends. So keeping money idle would not be definitely a, a good financial proposition and therefore it will go to repay the debt. But the ultimate end use is what we already defined is manufacturing R&D and digitalization and by repaying debt we are creating capacity for that. Understood. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dhanan. Bagrodia from ASK. Please go ahead. Um, hi, sir. Congratulations. Excellent, excellent results. Uh, this is on your UCP business. Is this 8.4% in an unseasonal quarter? Is this something which is uh, now a base which we could be using going ahead? Because uh, compared to other competitors, this is the highest. Your voice is not clear. You may have to speak louder. Uh, well, is this better? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. So congratulations on a fantastic set of results. Just on your 8.4% UCP margin uh, in an unseasonal quarter, is this something now steady state which will be there uh, going ahead? And what, what have we done differently this quarter to get these, uh, these margins in UCP business? Uh, I, I am not very sure uh, that I will be able to commit it in steady state. Uh, but but uh, you are aware of the background. We 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 felt that uh, this business can give nine to nine point five percent margin. That that was the one pre-COVID. We all we all felt, and we ourselves have delivered in some quarters. And in the recent past, I have been saying it more looks like a eight point five to nine percent. EBIT uh, uh, margin business that, that I have been categorically stating even in television interviews, basically because the competition is improving, uh, increasing, and uh, manufacturing capacity is expanding, and uh, obviously uh, with the with the, with with the uh, uh, with the uh, seasonality factor, one will be in a position to assume that 9% to 9.5% is not going to be feasible. That is the background. Yeah. Now, this particular quarter, it is due to A, 
significant growth in the revenue. So the, this business, the elasticity with regard to scale is very high because you are carrying the operating cost constant. Right? It's not that you will be able to reduce your sales and other operating expenses. Second is, we do have uh, the repositioned products, which in line with our, you know, you remember we were premium player, we became affordable premium, we have introduced affordable range. So, the product repositioning is helping. Third, we have been saying, when Blue Star Climatic commences production, we will be able to provide uh, certain uh, uh, margin improvement and that is what is uh, happening because PCP is now operational at least 30% uh, of the quantity of air conditioners sold are coming from PCP which Blue Star sources from Blue Star Climatic Limited. And uh, guidance, we, we think we will be somewhere between 8 to 8.5%. Uh, fantastic. And secondly, so now regarding our capex, so now how much would be the total capex we expect for this year, next year, after now with this new, this and maybe a follow up to that, how are we thinking about using our uh, capacities now to maybe do for exports? Because now we have, uh, now we have had some time. Any thoughts on those? Uh, your, uh, your Nikhil will answer. If you are you are asking specifically about the room air conditioners, you are asking Blue Star as a whole. So I'm asking for exports now. Are we using? Are we going to be using our capacities now, additional capacities to even export? And any thoughts on how we plan to go about that when we enter new regions or new countries? Okay. So uh, again, uh, I am. It, it is. Uh, you know, your earlier question was related with room air conditioners. This question is on the Blue Star as a whole. So first point I want to clarify is our international footprint expansion program is not through room air conditioners in this phase at all. The okay. very first phase, our expansion is connected with commercial air conditioning systems and solutions, which okay. are basically uh, the the larger air conditioning systems we will be uh, we will one day be exporting room air conditioners but the, today it, it is not our intent for the simple reason china is a very large player in the global market i i do not think we will be able to uh, you know, uh, succeed there at this point of a time. You have to build the scale, you have to build your reputation to become that. But our plans are connected with the commercial air conditioning system. And in that, again, each country has got its own uh, design standards. Uh, in, you know, energy efficiency is different, voltage frequency is different. So we we are attempting Europe and North America. We have certain leads. We are in the process of developing, prototyping, and testing our products. And again, we are not selling in our own Blue Star brand. We are going to be making it for international brands. That is the direction. And our existing capacity will be used there. And we are expanding the capacity as the market grows for domestic as well as international markets. Okay. Perfect. And so what would be the CapEx number for this year next year? So as I said, the CapEx, uh, CapEx, including maintenance and everything, will be in the region of 650 crores over two years. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Mahavar from UBS. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Um, first of all, congratulations, sir, on data uh, medication and impulsive strategy. Um, I have um, first question is uh, in the cooling segment, sir, what is the um, share of uh, room AC revenues in the first half? What is the revenue of? Uh, room ACs uh, in the UCP. We don't disclose that, you know, it becomes selective disclosure. Uh, so the segment uh, only we can maintain. Okay, fair point, sir. Um, second question is, um, so we are moving from 6 uh, lakhs to 1.2 million. Broadly, um, you know, 13% of next two, three year annual recurring, you know, market demand can be our capacity share. Uh, it also implies, um, you know, we keep, uh, 
the outsourcing also high so broadly uh, on a medium term basis can you help us understand how much broadly um, will be you know met by capacity and what uh, uh, would going to be the outsourcing strategy because at 1.2 million um, capacity right which in shri city 2 will come uh, at 13.5 percent market share in first half which you've mentioned on a two-three year basis, so um, you can make an assumption. Roughly around 10 percent is getting outsourced. So that is basically window air conditioner, and also mm -hmm. certain, you know, like a vertical air conditioning systems you have seen. The market size is small. It is, it is not worthwhile to manufacture. That, that will be getting outsourced. And uh, you can you can assume that 90 percent of the air conditioner sold by Blue Star will be made by Blue Star in its own factories. Either Blue Star or Blue Star Climatex should be manufacturing that. Fair point, very helpful. And I can assume X of um, compressors, uh, the entire bill of material is covered by Blue Star. I am uh, the, uh, no, <laughs> there may be a few other items which may be made outside also, you know, like for, a, for example, uh, there may be motors, uh, which we buy from outside. There are certain mm -hmm. electronic components which uh, are our IP, we may get it fabricated outside. So the, the question is that uh, it, it is not, uh, it, it is ma our own manufactured with whatever needs to be outsourced it will be. Obviously we do not manufacture compressors as of now. Fair point, so sir. Any other components which will be, it's not everything is made in us. Fair point. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you, uh, you know, for great color as you always provide. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Swati Jinjinwala from BOB. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for taking my question, sir. So, there are two questions on the UCT side. Uh, first, could you give us some color on the volume growth for the quarter? And uh, second, uh, you think that industry has grown at 30 percent, but few uh, the players have reported an almost around sub 20 percent growth. So, uh, any idea or any color you can provide on who are the major players who gain share during the quarter? <laughs> I will not. I will not do that. The the, the question is that uh, you know the the important thing is that when we say our growth, it is over last year. So obviously last year how I performed and that determined this year growth apart from this year own performance, correct? But the question is compared with the market growth, whether we have grown faster, yes, that's what we understand. Our, our internal estimates reveal that we have grown faster than the market in terms of the volumes. And uh, the uh, the market growth is 30 percent, and we have grown by some 39 percent. That's what it is. Uh, okay, and can you just uh, any idea on the volume growth for the quarter for the UCT business? Volume growth only I'm saying. It is. Uh, is it's a. Uh, Revenue, uh, uh, revenue and volume today you can assume one and the same because for the simple reason, see when the when the there is a distinct change in the pricing or the product portfolio. I think both will be one and the same as far as this quarter is concerned. See, there was no uh, step jump in terms of prices. There was no energy labeling that was taking place in this particular quarter. So volume growth or revenue growth should be more or less the same. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anupam Gupta from IIFL Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Good uh, morning, sir. Um, so you talked about deep freezers growing faster than RAC, but let's say if you look at the product business as a whole, so the non-REC portion, um, now that you are doing expansion there as well and you are targeting exports as well, over the medium term, how do you see the non-REC portion of the product business growing in terms of uh, revenues for you and would it also make uh, any major difference to the margins versus the REC business? No, what you have to look at is in Blue Star's total portfolio, what is the room AC business? Uh, you know, yeah. I, our, our estimate is it, it should be in the range of 
around uh, 30 percent one third of our business should be coming from room air conditioners okay and and then the non rac so uh, so let's say when you say so, so, the so there 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 is, there is a projects business and in the in the long term that that may become around 15% of our portfolio 15 to 20% the rest of it comes from commercial air conditioning or commercial air conditioning services or the both domestic and international no so what i was referring to was more of the commercial refrigeration business so within the product business itself uh, so you have the rac and the commercial uh, refrigeration you know, too you know you are indirectly asking in within segment 2 how much is commercial refrigeration no, i'm not asking that sir i'm not asking i'm simply asking what rate at which it will in your view for you given the expansion which you are doing what rate at which it will no so you can very easily assume our next next to five year period 25% cagr will definitely happen in the business it is a very small base okay okay and and so far that growth was also coming from unorganized sector which will dramatically change for the simple reason uh, no longer chinese import is possible so it it should be a it should be a high growth business okay and as you are expanding is the competition also expanding um uh, capacities to cater to this now that the chinese imports are not happening obviously anywhere growth uh, is there they are already there and when the market becomes significant even multinationals will start coming in already you have seen many small players being taken over by international players uh, and uh, so there that part and parcel of the game and uh, in and uh, and it will be a good sign right if uh, others are coming in yeah sure sir Uh, so the second question is for mr sony uh, if you look at this quarter the capital employed in the product business was significantly higher i understand an unallocated portion was also higher because you raised the fund but why did the capital employed in product business go up very sharply q on q uh, yeah right so in the current quarter like <coughs> the investments which are happening in sri city phase 2 uh, plus the sub 300 liter all of that investments are happening in the current year so to that extent the capital employed will go up Okay, so it's already reflecting in second quarter, is what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. It's there in the balance sheet, so it will be okay. Capital employed will have all that is, you know, whatever is the fixed asset capitalization, CWIP. So even capital working progress is part of capital employed. Fine. Uh, that's all from my side, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Srinidhi from HSBC. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Thank you for the opportunity uh, and congratulations on great set of numbers. There are a couple of questions I have on the electromechanical projects and commercial AC segment. Sir, uh, the product business that the company has within this segment, the VRFs and chillers, may I know what percentage of this business product business comes from the project orders that the company takes, or are largely both these business independent? No, I am sorry. I wish I am able to disclose that, but. you know i i the the segments were defined in a particular manner and we have been maintaining that so there is absolutely no reason for us not to disclose that uh, other than the regulatory reasons number one number two is i keep talking about this even in the forums in which sebi is present so what is the real issue real issue is that i am a listed company and my competitors are multinationals so look at our disclosures look at our uh, integrated report and the brsr all kinds of information that we disclose and uh, i i won't be able to have access to any of this information so my multinational competitors get access to enormous amount of information okay now if that information is available we will be happy to disclose every possible thing including what is the commercial air conditioner what is electromechanical projects what is room air conditioners what is commercial refrigeration uh, we have desired to do so but we are not in a level playing field 
right so my hands are tied look at uh, you know the my all my competitors will get the every data you look at the brsr how much of information we have disclosed not even 10% of that i will have access to that whatever i do so i i, I keep telling sadi it is grossly unfair Okay. I want uh, 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 sure. company disclosure. Uh, I I I'm only just explaining why we are not further modifying the segment reporting. Look at even the register of companies disclosure. It will be one lump that that will be given. So therefore we are we are willing to do so, but it is not level playing field. So you have to forgive us and we apologize for it. No problem. No. Actually, sir, I, I'm not sure whether I uh, I framed my question rightly. I wanted to know: Is the project order do you take that drives your product business, or uh, these are mutually exclusive business? That's what I wanted to not the ah, mix of product and services. That is very well. I can tell you. I absolutely uh, yeah, an important question that uh, it used to be uh, some ten uh, years ago. Like for example. project business will bring in uh, around uh, 40% of the product business commercial uh, like a chiller uh, for example or any any units like that but increasingly there is no correlation whatsoever it is not even 2% you get it out of that if you ask me service yes there may be 20% uh, service business may come because we are executing a large project not because your equipment is there but it opens up uh, the uh, the larger maintenance of a particular facility you may be better place to grab that order right uh, and to may and, 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 and to disclose to you further large projects they unbundle the equipment let us say there is a big airport that is coming he will go ahead and tender out the chiller separately which i may be a bidder i may be still supplying the chiller to that project but it is not due to project's order project bid is a separate package altogether right and now i understand sir and so last i want on the on the project part of this segment uh, how often does the contracts blue star takes uh, have a direct contract with the end customer who is investing and how often it is with some master contractor who is in between you and the main uh, it main uh, Rough, company roughly which investing roughly around one third roughly around one third what you call as general contractors okay Yeah. And last one, sir, on the product business within that, how is the inquiry pipeline looking like? Good, good. Except for the buildings, I don't think the buildings are expert. By, by buildings, I mean an office complex or a mall. Uh, these are not. And uh, the uh, factories, uh, infra, data centers. uh healthcare these investments are on i think office spaces were largely unutilized uh, post the pandemic they are getting utilized and there is a delay number one number two i as you can imagine the biggest cities there is no space for any more complexes to come so there it will develop you will see for for example it could be the, the like uh, gurugram came up at some point of time and uh, noida came at some point of time now i think it is the delhi agra maybe one huge development you you will uh, in in mumbai you know it was a textile mill which uh, released the kind of real estate uh, i suppose it will be the new mumbai airport related development there hotels complexes that should be the thing so it should come back today buildings are not right Uh, thank you for answering my question and all the very best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Natasha Jain from Nirmal Bang. Please go ahead. Hi sir, uh, congratulations on a good set of numbers. So my question is a follow up on the last participant question. So uh, you have to be louder. We can't hear you at all. Okay, sir, so can you hear me now? Hello. Okay. Yeah. So my uh, first question is a follow up on the last participant's question. While I understand that we've been moving away from the commercial building sector, 
so this quarter's growth is kind of a deceleration because our historical average has been approximately 30% so i just want to know that uh, this decline in the growth rate is any other factor contributing to this or are we seeing any stress so if you can throw some light on the quality of the order book as well as the geographical uh, spread in terms of where we be booking the orders so that's my first question in the in the projects business you are asking yes sir what you were you are thinking the growth has decelerated so so i have historically seen that you at least post a 30% growth because second and third quarter you tend to do more order booking so this year it's slightly tapered at 12% so just wanting to understand has what has led to a slowdown in this growth I, we are not seeing a slowdown. I don't know how you are concluding. And if you recollect in the last in the last conference call, I had explained this as well because there there was a there was a almost a similar question. I think it was from uh, Ravi Swaminathan. I think at that time I had explained. Uh, see, first of all. i told you point number 1 point number 1 blue star will be interested in booking high quality orders which should be uh, which should be cash flow based and profitably based this is number 1 number 2 is it will be uh, it it the orders are finalized that is different space speeds right that some order will get finalized this quarter some order this one this is not uh, in a project business you should not be looking at a particular quarter to be concluding about the trend definitely not because suddenly one lump order will come in uh, yeah 400 crore 300 crore order can completely switch third is you are, when you are saying quarter over last year quarter it is dependent on what had happened in the previous quarter what has to be really looked at in, in the internally how we look at is what is the carry forward order book that is the historical information that is available what do we look at it we look at it trailing four quarters what is the order inflow trailing four quarters what is the order inflow in the previous year that that is the other way of comparing it so going by all of this i am not with the figures that are available feeling that something has slowed down at all if at all we know from our market insights orders from the building sector finalizations are not taking place so nikhil what is the order yeah so just uh, you know as you see when i kind of gave the analysis our order inflow for segment 1 we said was 1765 crores as compared to 1198 crores in q2 of last year which is a 47% growth So therefore, I was a little surprised when you say it was not there. So the growth was 47%, if you see. And uh, if you are comparing it with what happened in last September or that September, so even the base is going up. That is also what you have to understand. Yeah, but, but in any case, you have to look at pending order book or carried for or order book whether it is growing or staying at that level. Then it is a good indicator. And carried for order book we. Told is at 4,600 crores against 3,053 crores of last year, which is a 51% growth. Understood, sir. So I think that helps a lot. Uh, so my next question is on the RAC business. It's more of a macro-related question. So, so our channel checks indicate that premiumization has been happening in the RAC segment. So we found out that Daikin has come out with more affordable category products. So over the medium term, do you think that there this could pose as a challenge in terms of customers shifting to more of premium brands? And I I basically want to know what's our footing in the premium placement category. Uh, I'm uh, uh, I will clarify, but I I'm, I wish to understand affordable product is not premium. Affordable is opposite of premium. So, so no, I meant uh, that Daikin was not in the affordable category, but he, from the premium, he's come to mid-premium segment by cutting prices or even rolling out products which are not that expensive. So, broadly, in a comparison basis. Yeah. So very clear. So uh, I'll try and say for your benefit and others as well. Point number one: growth 
in you are reading news article there are luxury cars still gone up or the premium products are being consumed the large size televisions are being consumed like this it is it is, it is uh, true but it is not the mass of the market at all the 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 question is india's market category after category whether it is fmcg or garments or it is consumer durable is automobile biggest market is in the affordable segment and uh, the growth is coming from aspirational middle class growth is coming from tier 3 4 5 towns and therefore for a brand to build market share beyond a particular percentage it has to come from affordable segment and the blue star was a player in as with the premium product uh, till it was around 10 11 percent market share we understood from there to move further we have to bring in affordable premium then we have moved to affordable so therefore we do have affordable affordable premium premium and the premium products constitute less than 10 percent of our total sales today you take any one it will be the same that is why you will have you take airlines category who is number one you take automobile who is number one you take uh, washing machines who is number one you take refrigerators who is number one you will find a common denominator they are players serving the bottom of the pyramid now blue star started playing in that segment but we are not repositioned the products so our margins took a beating so by design by intent by strategy we announced that we have repositioned our products so that without sacrificing my margin i will be in a position to deliver products for a very price point and uh, that that is the that is one of the reasons for our being able to maintain growth and improve profitability so it is not for air conditioner alone in any category you look at it you have to become a player who can serve the bottom of the pyramid and the growth in india will come from if it is b2c it is aspirational middle class tier 3 4 5 towns if it is b2b it is msme startups and if it is geography it is very clearly smaller towns i am i am not saying bigger towns there is no sale but that is not propelling your growth the growth is actually happening elsewhere so most importantly things like e-commerce in any category whether it is food consumption movie ticket travel or consumer durable or books or groceries the the fact is you are being driven towards low cost and the technology is also inculcating that habit and uh, so it is not cheap product you deliver you have to have the brand you have to have the ability to develop a product at that cost to be competing at that price point so all of us will do and the long term implication all players who are capable of doing that will survive and the fact of the matter is even if you take uh, the energy label five star remains only 25 26% it's all three star two star is the major consumption and the professor that's again very helpful so just last one last question so again this is more on the longer term prospect so um, one of the listed uh, player and the market leader in RAC is now planning to scale up or rather venture into the commercial AC portfolio so given that you are very favorably placed in that segment over the longer term how do you see the landscape changing in terms of commercial AC and the competitive intensity there thank you look india's penetration levels are lower and it it is the it is the fastest growing market in the world it is going to be a fastest growing market for many decades to come so obviously many players will be coming in many existing players will become aggressive and uh, we have to fight uh, we have to uh, grow in this environment and uh, we have done so so for so many years so we hope uh, it is it is, it is Uh, by the way the, for, for your benefit and others that uh, blue star's real growth started uh, when our indian ac industry growth started when 
एल जी सैमसंग केम इन टू दिस कंट्री एंड ब्लूसर्स ओन ग्रोथ स्टार्टेड वेन दी आर एस गॉट इंट्रोड्यूज वी हैव टू कंपीट विद मल्टीनेशनल लाइक डाइकिंग uh so for for a company to reinvent itself and move forward also that competition is important so competition will in that i have no doubt about it at all why when it is growing nobody is going to wait and watch and the speaker so thank you so much and all the very best thank you thank you very much we'll take that as the last question I would now like to hand the conference back to Mr. Nikhil Soni for closing comments. Yeah. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. With this, we conclude this quarter's earnings call. Do do feel free to revert to us in case any of your questions are not fully answered, and we will be happy to provide you the additional details either by email or in person. Thank you. Thank you very much. On behalf of Blue Star Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us ladies and gentlemen you may now disconnect your lines